Well, hello, Steinbeck. You've decided to join me for one of these for the first time in however many weeks. It's nice to have you here. Yes, it is. Good morning, everybody. And today we have some... What? Today we have some very exciting news in the film industry. But first, the intro. So for today's coffee, I am enjoying from Airship Roasters in, ooh, I cannot remember where these guys are. Oh yeah, Bentonville, Arkansas, right on the package. Uh, their Sumatra Carinchi, which has tasting notes of grapefruit, plum, and creamy cocoa. It's a honey process mixed variety with a complex acidity and cocoa body. I will take their word on that. My palate is not quite that refined. For me, it's just pretty good. It does, I will admit, have a little bit of citrusiness that other coffees don't have. Anyway, let's get on to very exciting news about film. Kodak is hiring. Now, this article comes from Petapixel, and, uh, but I've seen it repeated in a number of other sources. This is very exciting news. We all, if you're here, probably know the recent history of film very much, very well, that it just kind of tanked all of a sudden and has been in a rebuilding mode for the last 15-ish years, give or take, maybe a little bit more. Um, so Kodak, having come out of bankruptcy, whatever it was, a decade or so ago, has took on the strategy of being the only, or the last standing at least, color film producer. So Fuji, I think, is still producing a couple of them. I saw, you know, I saw 400H at Mike's camera the other day. I'm not sure if that's new old stock from before it was banned or if they've reformulated it and re-released it and just simply not told anyone, which seems like terrible marketing advice. Anyway, um, but anyone else making color film? Oh yeah, Adox, sort of. They released Color Mission, which wasn't their own, but that they used to raise funds to start producing their own color film. Um, so, so, but back to Kodak, who are, by, who are inarguably the largest color film manufacturer, still and motion, and, I, and realistically, I think if it weren't for the motion, not having access to their numbers, obviously, but my gut feeling is that if it weren't for the motion side of that, the still side would still pretty much be suffering. But what they've, they have such demand on film. And if you've gone to try to buy Kodak film at the shop, your nearest shop in recent history, you'll probably have had a hard time doing it. Um, their film is in such high demand that they are hiring to, to get in various fields, chemistry, engineering, technicians, and I believe packagers as well. They need people to package this stuff up they're running packaging lines 24 seven for the first time in a very long time to meet the demand of film photographers. So, and as you know, on this channel, obviously film is very big here. Next year for me and the All About Film series, it's gonna be very Kodak heavy. Um, December is gonna be GP3, but February is gonna be Ultramax 400, then March, April, and uh, April and June, I think I have them back to back as Portra 800 and Portra 160. Uh, might slip a little bit, but 800, I only have two rolls of 120, 160, I have that, and then 10 rolls of four by five, or 10 sheets of four by five. And I'm done collecting images with those, so that's gonna happen in the next week or so. Um, at any rate, next year's All About Films will be very Kodak color film heavy with them making up three of the seven or eight all about film videos I'm gonna to attempt to release in 2023. Um, at any rate, great news though, because a demand, an increased demand in color film, in, well, in any film, an increased demand in film photography should tell some savvy camera makers that there is an increased demand and need for reliable, workable new film cameras that can take really high quality images. You can take great images and very captivating images with any of the Lomography cameras or things like the, um, the Kodak H35, the Rito 22. You can take captivating images, but not 
technically outstanding images. I think that's a fair statement. So hopefully seeing that film is in this demand will spur some company to say, all right, let's release a really good film camera. So no insight as to whether or not that's actually in the cards. Uh, every time I make a video about film, by the way, some number of people in the comments say we need new film cameras, and we do. They are not wrong in any way, shape, or form. So the film industry is healthy right now, and hopefully that continues into and through whatever global recession is starting, has started, is coming, depends on where you get your news from, and uh, that it survives all of what's coming. So whatever that looks like. Um, forecasts right now or that uh, that I've been reading are that the, whatever global recession is upon us or coming will be less severe and over more quickly here in the US than in other parts of the world. So um, should be relatively decent news or the best news in that vein for Kodak. All right. So what does that mean for you guys? Well, if you live in Rochester and you're looking for a job, or if you don't and you're looking for a job in, like, in the film industry and have the creds to do it, uh, definitely see if Kodak needs your skills. Uh, my folks lived in Rochester before I was born and um, had quite the number of stories about it, 17-foot snowdrifts and things like that, which I, to me sounds lovely. Um, so anyway. I think that is great. And the, um, then this also for our, the next Cameras and Coffee video, I'm going to talk about changes in the digital market space. And I think it's going to be interesting to look at how much different the digital market space is and how much it's going and how differently it's going to look in the midterm future versus how it looks today and what some of those driving factors are. Because film photography now is in a position where it has a much better ability to have a staying power in terms of having a market share and having a somewhat stable to slightly growth oriented market share versus digital photography which is staring down the barrel of an increasingly small market share ever shrinking market share so um and there are some really strong factors in the marketplace as to why that is and next week Fingers crossed I have time next week for one of these. We'll talk about why that is because there's, there's a lot to process on that. So have a good week, and I'll see you in the next Cameras and Coffee.